Call him a mad vigilante. Call him a hero. Either way, he's always on target. We want you to get out of New York. Permanently. Never make a death wish. Because a death wish always comes true. And you get to love it. Welcome to Kermit Uncut. Something strange happened this morning. I looked on Twitter and there was a post from Stuart Barr who posts as Max Wren on Twitter. He's a very, very fine film journalist who I like very much. He posted a cryptic post which said, I was just thinking, in these times of heightened political tension, what we really need is an Eli Roth remake of Death Wish. And I looked around a little bit and I found a link to a story in Den of Geek and the situation, well, let me start from the very, very beginning. Death Wish, as you probably know, began life as a novel by Brian Garfield back in 1972. It was optioned, and originally it was going to be turned into a film directed by Sidney Lumet, who wanted to cast in the lead role Jack Lemmon, which tells you something about Sidney Lumet's take on this story about somebody who is driven to vigilante violence, but undermining the idea of vigilante violence. Well, the Sidney Lumet version never happened. He went off, he made Serpico instead. And what happened was, we got the Michael Winner version starring Charles Bronson and a series of increasingly depressing sequels and the rest is pretty much history. The series finally kind of died a slow death and around about 2006 Sylvester Stallone started saying that he was thinking of resurrecting the Death Wish franchise. Then in 2007 we got James Wan's Death Sentence which is based on Brian Garfield's novel of the same name which kind of retrod the ground of Death Wish, and then, once again, everyone forgot about it. Until 2012. Now, in 2012, The Hollywood Reporter reported that Joe Carnahan, who's an interesting filmmaker, was set to remake Death Wish. Now, Joe Carnahan had written a script which industry insiders have told me was actually a really interesting piece of work. One person who read it said it was one of the best things he'd ever read. Well, move forward a little bit, and Joe Carnahan departed. It all seemed to be fairly civil, but then an email which Joe Carnahan had written to MGM CEO Jonathan Glickman turned up in The Hollywood Reporter in 2013. It was a fairly fruity, frank exchange. Here's what it said. You had a potential Oscar-winning film with maybe the best script in Hollywood, but because you're a coward and a dumb you now have an untested second-time director and an arrogant, lazy, aging action star that will run that poor kid into the ground. Good luck, You're a spineless, gutless who doesn't belong in the business. Enjoy your run as a studio head, Glickman. It's going to be a short one, you, Joe Carnahan. Now, insider reports suggested that that aging, lazy, arrogant action star was in fact none other than Bruce Willis, who has subsequently been signed on to star in the film. So everything looked really bad, but then it was announced that the guys who made Big Bad Wolves, which is a really, really interesting movie, were actually going to take over the project. They were going to direct this new version of Death Wish, the script of which had been rewritten by several people. It was going to star Bruce Willis, but hey, they might make something interesting of it. Until they too walked away. Now, their leaving was announced first in a post on social media that was written in Hebrew. So perhaps understandably, not everybody picked up on it. But then Mike Fleming at Deadline got someone to translate that post. Here's what it said. We wanted to stay away from the original and problematic, albeit fun to watch, Michael Winner film and move more towards the spirit of the original novel by Brian Garfield, an excellent minimalist novel that never got the cinematic treatment it deserved. We wanted to follow the vision of the director who was originally set to make it, but ultimately was not allowed to, Sidney Lumet. When we imagined the thriller in our minds, we thought Taxi Driver falling down with a blood-curdling finale like Sicario. But this would have involved a lot of changes to the script, and it turned out that time didn't allow for those changes, and it also turned out that not everybody was as enthusiastic as they were about making those changes. So they left. And the film was once again without a director until, as I said at the beginning, Eli Roth stepped into the fray. You know, it's a funny thing. You can never judge a movie before it's been made. You can never judge a movie before you've seen it. But I'm drawn back to that original posting from Stuart Barr, Max Wren, that started me on this strange journey of discovery. I'll remind you of it. I was just thinking that in these times of heightened political tension, what we really need is an Eli Roth remake of Death Wish. <laughs>